and get started. Brother Jason and, and sister is going to lead us in the, in the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Okay, let's begin uh, Divine Chaplet uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's start with the prayer of St. Faustina. O oh, Jesus, eternal truth, our life, I call you, I call upon you, and I beg your mercy for poor sinners, O oh, sweetest heart of my Lord, full of pity on unfathomable mercy, I plead with you, the poor sinners, O oh, most sacred heart, fount of mercy, from the which gush forth rays of inconceivable grace upon the entire human race. I beg of you, light for poor sinners. O oh Jesus, be mindful of your own bitter passion, and do not permit the loss of souls redeemed at so dear a price of your most precious blood. O oh Jesus, when I consider the great price of your blood, I rejoice at the immensity for our drop alone, for one drop alone will have banished enough for the salvation of all sinners. Although sin in an abyss of wickedness and ingratitude, the price of the price paid for us can never be equaled. Therefore, I let every soul trust in the, in the passion of, the, of our Lord, the place it hopes in His mercy. God will not deny His mercy to anyone. Heaven and earth may change, but God's mercy will never be exhausted. Oh, what immense joy burns in my heart when I contemplate your incomprehensible goodness. Oh, Jesus, I desire to bring all sinners to your feet that they may glorify your mercy throughout endless ages. Diary of St. Faustina, page 72. You inspire Jesus, but the source of life gush forth for souls. In the ocean, mercy envelop the whole world. O fountain life, a fan of all divine mercy, you envelop the whole world and empty yourself for upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? A kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless you, are once women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he should come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, 
soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. And for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. And for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion.
For his sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Padre Pio. Oh, that's my right? Right, right, you got that? Say Padre Pio. Did you get that one? No? Did you, did you? J Jason, did you get that video? So when he, while, while he's bringing it up, uh, I'm gonna, I want to ask some questions to you. Ask you some questions. And they, they're not necessarily rhetorical, okay? Yeah, there you go. Wait, don't, you don't have to play it yet. Uh, the, these don't have, they don't have to be rhetorical, so you can, you can ask, answer these questions if you want, but I definitely want you to write these questions, this question down, okay? Um, so, first question is, it's kind of rhetorical. Is it possible to attend every single sore night for the last five years and not grow. Yes. Oh. 
Come on. Yes. Ouch. So it wasn't rhetorical. Y'all just shouting out the answer. Ouch. Shouting okay. it. Right, right, brother. Ouch, right? Ouch. Brother William, is it possible to yes. not grow even though you come er every every time? Not grow. So here's another question for you. Could be rhetorical, or you can shout the answer out. Is it possible to come to Mass every single Sunday? You a date, you could just come to Mass every Sunday and not grow in your faith. Is that yeah. possible? Yeah. 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 Really? <sighs> Go to Mass every Sunday, come to Sower Nights every single Thursday for, for five years and you still don't grow. Um, now, listen to this. Well, first of all, I want to give a mad, oh man, oh man, what, didn't we have an awesome, wasn't God good? Didn't the spirit move? Wasn't last Friday a night of miracles? Wow. Woo. Wow. Last Friday, last Friday absolutely exceeded my expectations. Last Friday was amazing. Last Friday was just blew me, just blew my mind. Wow. Wow. Half holy, half hood was in the house. Wow, man. He just, he just, he was like, he just came off the blocks, right? He just came straight out, man. I was like telling his testimony straight out. Didn't have to warm up or anything, right? He came, he came ready. Wow. And then, not only did he just come out with his deep, powerful testimony, he started, he, that brother is a prayer warrior. He started, he started praying for us, started praying in the spirit. And then the spirit just, the, the, I mean, the spirit was moving as people started to receive their deliverance right off the top. Woo! Woo! <laughs> And you know what I call that? I call that a mountaintop experience, right? A mountaintop experience. Wow. We are up. But I don't know where you were this past Sunday, but here at Holy Name, we had a mountaintop Pentecost feast day uh, mass. Woo! Man, we brought the Spanish community and the English community together. That, first of all, that right there was awesome, right? So it's bilingual, and it didn't even feel like any kind of confusion or anything like that. It was, the spirit was moving in the both of languages, and uh, you know the dancing deacon was in full effect. You know, I was dancing, and everybody was dancing, and everybody was clapping, everybody was singing. And uh, that right there was a mountaintop experience. Another mountaintop experience. But now, let me tell you about nature. In nature, the top of the mountain, that's not where things grow. Uh, plants and nature, trees, usually you don't find very much growth at the top of the mountain. The place where things grow is in the valley. A valley experience, the bottom of the mountain. In life is where we grow. All right? Uh, so, yeah. So, oh, yeah, one more thing about these mountaintop experiences that the powerful solar nights and powerful masses. The atmosphere is charged with fire, right? It's like it's charged with fire. Even right now in this Bible study, we, we, we're fellowshipping, right? We're connecting. We're feeding each other's fire, right? We're lifting each other up. We're edifying each other. We came here expecting, right? We came here expecting to, to uh, be lit on fire, right? Just like when you have a fireplace and you, you throw, you know, you throw more logs on the fire. That's what's happening tonight. So the first tip on how to grow our faith 
is get rid of the fire extinguishers in your life. Might want to write that down, first tip. Get rid, get rid, of, get rid of the fire extinguishers. Uh, I don't know, William, if you can have access to your, your mom's room to get some pencils for us, I don't know. But um, uh, get rid of the fire extinguishers. And the fire extinguishers, metaphorically, are people, places, and things. Ouch. Right? Ouch. Fire extinguishers in our life are metaphorically, right, symbolically, people, places, and things. So what, what, when, when I say people can be fire extinguishers, we come here, right? We come here fired up. We come here excited. We come here feeling kind of radical. Then we go back to our world and people start, people, can anybody tell me how, how can a person be a fire extinguisher? They start stomping on you. Stomp, they, stomp. They pretty much put out your fire. Stomping on your fire, right? They're getting negative. Air What's that? At work, we call those the air conditioners of your life. <laughs> cool off, cool off. Brother Williams got some pencils for you guys if you need it. Uh -huh. Right. And what kind of things? Do, what kind of things do fire extinguishers do or say? What do they do or say? Are you going to be a man of God? You're still acting the same way you did a couple of months ago. You're a hypocrite. Uh, <laughs> and you say you you're a hypocrite. hypocrite. It's, and, and it's only been, I, I know who you are. It's only been, what, what, uh, Brother David, new, new member? It's only been, what, how long has it been for you? When, when did you get baptized? Two months ago. Two months ago. Woo! <laughs> so, so the fire extinguishing day in Brother David's life will be, oh, come on. Can't be that real. It's only been two months. You're changing everything that fast? Give it a couple weeks, you'll be over. Right, yeah. Come on back, you know. Come on back to the real life. Right? And what about uh, people, places? What about, what, is there a place that's a fire extinguisher for, extinguisher for anybody in here? Could be your own job, and your own work. Your job. So here's the deal. Is that David? The liquor store. The liquor store could be a fire extinguisher. The liquor store could be a fire extinguisher. As a matter of fact, that just reminds me, uh, for some people, just smelling, smelling certain things could put out your fire, if you know what I mean. Smelling that, that good herb, you know? That devil's crap. devil's Walk down the street and just don't inhale. Don't inhale when you... When you're walking down Cimarron, walking down Cimarron, don't inhale. You just, just hold your breath and you, your fire won't go out, right? Uh, I used to have a, uh, when I was working with the young people, I used to have a saying, doing the right thing with the right people with, in the wrong time, in the wrong place becomes the wrong thing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, you guys? It's a fire extinguisher. People, place. Well, can you think of any things that become fire extinguishers? Music. Certain music. Wow, I remember one time I did a, a high school retreat. I did a high school retreat one time. I used to be, com, com, I used to be campus minister at St. Bernard High School a long time ago. And we, this one guy, he invited, man. He did an altar call at the retreat. And he, they, they, they responded to, he invited everybody to take all their music that was not glorifying God, that was like a fire extinguisher, and just, just throw it on the altar. He just threw all their, you know, their, their uh, gangster hip hop or their, or their uh, profanity, any profane music. As a matter of fact, some music is actually pornographic, right? You just threw it all on the altar. And they were like, okay, I'll get it, I'll get it later, <laughs> right? And guess what that brother did? He said, he said, no, you ain't getting this. He just smashed it all, right? A fire extinguisher for, a fire extinguisher for me when I was younger was my past. Mm -hmm. My past. 
I had to literally leave my past behind in order to grow in my faith. I had to leave my past behind. I'm not talking about, by the way, um, I want to ask you another question. You might want to write this one down as well. Um, yeah, think about this. So what I, I want to be, the role I want to play tonight for the next 30 or 40, 40 minutes is, the role I want to play tonight is kind of like a, a coach, like a coach or a trainer, right? I, I, I remember one time I signed up to join 24 Hour Fitness and you know, the trainer, he comes up to me and he says, what do you, you know, what do you want to gain? What do you want to gain if I'm going to train you? So what I want you to write down and think about is what, what do you want to gain from growing spiritually or growing in your faith? Um, there was a, a book that came out a long time ago, maybe about 20 years ago, and it really impacted me big time. It was called The Prayer of Jabez. Anybody ever heard that before? Well, you need to look it back up again. Look, it's still available, it's like 10 bucks. And the, the premise about this book is, there was a man in the Old Testament by the name of Jabez, and um, uh, he was born in the tribe of Judah, the, and the Judah is the tribe that, the, uh, the ones that led the armies with praise and worship. With pra they were the worshipers, right? But his mom was, had so much pain in the delivery that she actually named him pain and suffering. That's what Jabez means, pain and suffering. So he had, he had a label. He had a label of pain and suffering as a child, right? But, but what happened in spite of his circumstances, right? In spite of his circum... So what I want you to think about right now is in spite of everything, in spite of your circumstances, in spite of the conditions, in spite of anything, you might be labeled like Jabez was as pain and suffering. You might be feeling like you carry that around on you, right? What Jabez did is he was bold in his prayer to God. And he said, bless me. This goes like this. Bless me indeed. Right? Bless me indeed. And what that really means is, I don't care. I don't care what they call me. I don't care how I'm labeled. I don't care what my past is. I don't care what I've been stuck in. I want, I want you, God, to bless me indeed. In other words, what would you, what, what, what do you imagine? What do you imagine your life would be like if you really got serious about growing in your faith? And God, um, when, when, but when we say bless, you know, we're not talking about when you sneeze. You know, when you sneeze, people say bless you, right? That's not what I'm talking about. When, when Jabez asked God to bless him, what he was asking for was a radical uh, gifting of his, his the, the extreme presence of God in such a way that his life would never be the same again. That's what a blessing is. You know what you know it comes from? It comes from the, the, the ancient Hebrew tradition where the, you know, the father passes on the blessing to the first. And so they all line up and hope to get, the, get their blessing. It's like an like um, inheritance that will give you, make sure that, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like um, <laughs> the, the husband of, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name that just died? Uh, Tina Turner. Tina, the husband of Tina Turner, Tina Turner. got blessed. <laughs> he got blessed big time. Like I think it was $150 million worth of a blessing. 
<laughs> it was his inheritance. The husband received Tina Turner's inheritance. Right? <laughs> That's a blessing. <laughs> right? So, so I want you to write down, maybe right now, what do you think your life would be like if you got serious about your spiritual growth? Got serious about your, um, your faith growing. Your faith growing. I think right now we need to get really, really uh, radical and serious about growing in our faith. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's enough just to come. You know, we're not party planners. We're not event planners. We're not, we don't, you know, thank God, you know, God blessed us. God made it possible for us to have a cool, have these cool things, you know, these tech things and all that. But that's not what it's all about. If we're going to hear from Padre Pio right now, after I make this one more comment. If we're not growing, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of a group that's not growing. As a matter of fact, many people say, many scientists say that you're not, you're either doing one or the other. You're either growing or you're dying. You don't just stay the same. Nobody stays the same. You're either growing or you're dying. So what is it? Are you dying or are you growing? And so, uh, you know, some people will be like, oh, Deacon, you're kind of judgy tonight. You're kind of judgy, right? Don't, get, don't, don't step up. In, don't, get, don't, get a, don't get in my business about what, how I'm living my life. Let me just, let me just live my life. I want to come to so night if I want to. I do what I want to do. You know, I'm, I'm a grown blank man, you know. <laughs> don't be all judgy, right? And you know what? Uh, so sometimes we sign up. When we sign up to be, you know, to get a, get a, uh, a physical trainer. Somebody like Sister Brenda, be our physical trainer. You know, if, she, if Brenda was our physical, she'd be, she'd be judging us, right? See, y'all do one more rep, do more. Y'all know you could do more, right? Right. I know you can do more. I know there's more here. I know there's more for you. There's more for you. Uh, hopefully we'll get through these scriptures today and we'll discover that we should be right. There should be leaders rising up. There should be teachers rising up. We should be dis discovering our destiny and our purpose rising up. And by the way, this is not where we grow. This is not where we grow. And as a matter of fact, the altar call is not where we grow. Worship is not where we grow. This is what should be happening. We should be, everybody here should have a testimony on their lips. Every single buddy here should be bringing a testimony to this place. That, you have a testimony because you've been through a test. And if you're scared to go through a test, you're scared to grow. Man, oh God, 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 God's not, God, God's not going to put you into a, God, nobody's, nobody's going to put you in on, through a test and then hang you out to dry. No, this is what I believe. That's what I believe. God puts us through a test. Listen to this. God puts us through a test so that he can be glorified. Now, I know you're probably looking at me like I'm crazy. Because I know I would if I was sitting there listening to you tell me this. Because it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. I'm going to go through hell. Right? I'm going to go through mess. Right? So that God can be glorified? That doesn't sound like what Sister Yesenia was talking about. A God who has a heart. A heart of love and compassion for me who's going through mess in my life. He wants me to go through a mess so that he can be glorified. That sounds, doesn't that sound kind of jacked up? 
why would a God want me to go through a mess? Here's the answer. He wants you to go through mess so that your mess can become your message. Ooh. All right? Don't, don't back off. Don't, don't back away. Don't hide. Don't run back. Don't, don't, don't run away from the trials of life. Step into it and say, ah, I can do this. As a matter of fact, this is another thing I want you to write down. Um, try something, right? I'll, I'll read this slow. Try to do something so big. Try to do something so big that only God can do it. Amen. Yeah. Hey. That's when you're stretching your faith, right? Like, for example, my legs are kind of tight right now. Why? Because I haven't been doing anything with them. <laughs> right? right? I remember one time I was trying to compete with my teenage son, and he's been training and working out and stretching. I said, man, you can't beat me. Man, you ain't nothing. I got out there in the middle of the street, got on the, got ready, said, go. And so as soon as, <laughs> soon, as I, soon as I got ready, I cramped up. And he was, he was all the way down the block laughing at me. Stretch. So we were all about removing the fire extinguishers. OK. So yeah, let's hear from uh, Father uh, uh, um, St. Padre Pio right now. Dear brothers and sisters today, I stand before you to discuss an important aspect of our spiritual journey, the growth of our faith. Throughout our lives, God uses various means to cultivate and strengthen our faith, enabling us to deepen our relationship with Him. Allow me to share with you five ways in which God nurtures our faith. Firstly, God uses prayer to grow our faith. Prayer is the gateway to communication with the divine. Through prayer, we connect with God, expressing our joys, sorrows, and desires. In pause, prayer, pause, we lay bare pause, our pause souls, it. opening our... So uh, when we communicate with each other, you know, I was saying I want to come to you tonight as if I'm like the, uh, the trainer, right? I think that's where we, we all should be each other's trainers. We all should be like prayer partners of accountability, especially on our, in our monthly uh, prayer chain, right? We should be like how, not only how you're doing, but how's your prayer life, right? How's your prayer life? Are you connecting with God? And we should be able to tell each other, no, man, I'm slipping. I haven't prayed today. Well, that's all right. Let me help you out here. Hey, go on. You can continue. Selves to God's presence and guidance. It is in these moments of vulnerability that God molds our hearts, aligning our desires with his will. Prayer nourishes our faith deepening our trust in God's providence and allowing us to witness the power of his answers. Secondly, God uses scripture to grow our faith. The Bible is not merely a collection of ancient texts, but a living and breathing testament of God's love and wisdom. Within its pages, we discover stories of faith, hope, and redemption. Through scripture, God speaks to us, Revealing his character and purpose. Pause. As we. St so. I don't know if you guys have a Bible that's decorating your house. Like it might be on a coffee table or somewhere all dusty. Uh, and also, I don't know if you ever heard the stereotypical idea or narrative that Catholics are not Bible people. Catholics are not Bible believers, or Catholics don't read the Bible, or Catholics don't use the Bible. We need to break that narrative right now, you know. Uh, or Catholics don't memorize the Bible. 
that's what we are. We're Bible people. We, we have the, 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 the beginning of Mass. You guys know what the beginning of Mass is called? It's called the Liturgy of the Word. The Word, right? As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus is alive at Mass in three places, not just the Eucharist. Right? He's alive in the Eucharist. He's alive in the Word of God uh, proclaimed, and he's alive in the, in the people gathered. So we are people of the Word. We are people so we should be consuming the Word every single, every single day. Figure out, figure out how you can. And here's one more thing I want to remind you. Don't, be caught, don't get caught up on um, great for the sake of good. Does you understand what I mean by that? Uh, don't, don't get caught up on great for the sake of good. What I mean by that is, um, I, I, I do that sometimes. Uh, I'm like, I, I want to get up at five, you know, and I want to spend at least a half hour in, in reading the Bible, and then I want to spend another 20 minutes in, in prayer, you know, I want to pray in tongues. And I don't get to any of it, right? Then I say, oh man, shoot. Another day, that, another day gone. So a uh, priest, I went to confession, I talked to that about a priest about that one time, and he said, Doug, a little is better than none. You know, do something. Eat something. It's like you, it's like, uh, you know, eating. You have to eat the word every day. Do something with the word of God. And the more you eat it, the more you'll, you, you know, it'll increase your desire to do more and more and more. Okay, so that's what we are. Continue. Study His Word, meditate on its teachings, and apply its principles to our lives. Our faith takes root and flourishes. God's Word becomes a lamp unto our path, guiding us through the challenges and uncertainties of life. Thirdly, God uses trials and tribulations to grow our faith. It is through adversity that our faith is tested and refined. In the midst of hardships, we often question why God allows such difficulties to enter our lives. However, it is during these times that our faith has the potential to grow exponentially. Trials teach us dependence on God, reminding us that our strength alone is insufficient. As we surrender our burden, no, continue, let that play. ...to him. We experience his faithfulness and provision. Through the storms of life, our faith becomes resilient, anchored in the unwavering belief that God is with us, even in the darkest of moments. Okay, pause. Fourthly... Anybody have any questions about that? I know that's a hard one right there. Uh, our faith grows in trials. I was talking about that before we started this, right? Anybody have any questions about that? That doesn't sound cruel to you? Abusive, sadistic, <laughs> masochistic, you know? Uh, tough love. Tough love, tough right? Love. Tough love. I like that, man. You know? Um, I don't know. I think everybody's been through something like that, right? Anybody, everybody's, raise your hand if you've been through, through, through something like that before. Everybody's been through something like that, right? Uh, but I guess the challenge is, um, to remember this, right? Remember, remember that in the midst of your trials, right? In the midst of your suffering, um, that's when, and, and I know, I know, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of challenge, a lot of mess in our world, right? But what we're, what we're really trying to say is, this is the moment, this can be the moment when, um, so there's two, different de de there's two different definitions of integrity, right? The one definition is to uh, who you are when nobody's listening or watching, right? But the other definition of integrity is what you're made of. The integrity of a building is actually what, he's, what the building is made of. So, 
When you find yourself in diverse temptations and trials, you just start to discover who, what you're made of, right? And so a lot of people crumble. A lot of people back out. A lot of people walk away. A lot of people blame God. A lot of people blame uh, all these things. Instead, come closer to God. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. God uses community to grow our faith. We were not created to walk this journey alone. God designed us for fellowship and mutual support. Within the community of believers, we find encouragement, accountability, and love. In the presence of fellow believers, we witness the diverse expressions of faith, drawing inspiration from their stories and testimonies. Through the sharing of our struggles and victories, we experience the transformative power of genuine relationships. It is in these connections that our faith is strengthened as we learn to love, forgive, and serve one another, just as Christ did for us. Lastly, pause, God uses pause. his create. I want to say something about that community stuff. Is that where you got this from, Brother uh, Hernan? Remember that, that flyer you came out with when we first got started? That's exactly what's on the flyer, right? Um, I'm thankful that the house is full tonight. I've got about 30 people here. This is not merely what Father Bill is talking about. We're having community tonight. We're sharing the Word of God. We're sharing snacks and stuff like that, right? This is not community. All right? In other words, the word fellowship is translated, I think, is in Greek into koinonia. Koinonia, koinonia really means communion. And communion is not something that you, it's not a piece of bread. Communion is not a wafer. Communion is something, is, 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 is an absolute connection, is a binding together to be equally yoked to be at one with one another. And it's not just on Thursdays or on Sundays. You can't do that. You can't, you can't experience communion or fellowship or community just on once a week. We have to do that. We have to create a, a relationship with each other throughout the whole week. We have to be able to connect with each other. We have to be able to watch out for each other. We have to, I mean, I remember when I was a young adult, uh, uh, um, <laughs> Melody and I, we were involved in a, young, a, a ministry like this, and we were so close that people actually accused us, they actually accused us of being a cult. You know, because we were that, we were so, like, we cared about each other so much. And, and the outward expression of our caring for each other was way different than the frozen chosens who go to church every Sunday. You understand what I mean? So those frozen, those frozen chosens, those frozen chosens who go to church every Sunday but are not part of the koinonia, they're not part of the fellowship that we had, they're like, what's wrong with those people over there? They must be in some. They must be must be drinking some kind of Kool Aid or something, you know. <laughs> no, but it was just the fact that we felt we actually fell in love with each other so much that we take time out during the week, you know. That's that's what you that's what you got to do. Let's finish up, Mr. Uh, Mr. Asian to grow our faith. Nature, with its awe inspiring beauty and intricacy, points us to the Creator. The breathtaking vistas. The delicate petals of a flower and the harmony of the natural world remind us of God's majesty and creativity. As we observe his handiwork, our faith is awakened and nourished. In the stillness of nature, we find solace and a renewed sense of wonder. We realize that the same God who intricately designed the universe is intimately involved in our lives, guiding and sustaining us. So, dear friends, our faith is not static, but a living, breathing entity that requires nurturing and growth. Through prayer, scripture, 
trials, community, and creation, God uses various means to cultivate our faith, enabling us to experience a deeper, more vibrant relationship with Him. Let us embrace these opportunities and surrender ourselves to His loving hands, confident that He will continue to mold and shape us into vessels of faith, hope, and love. May God bless each one of you abundantly on your faith journey. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Padre Pio. <laughs> um, hey, hold up, DK. One question. Yeah. So that video, the guy narrating it, that's really supposed to be no, no. St. Padre Pio. No, he was just quoting him. Oh, no, but that's, that's supposed to be really St. Padre Pio said all of this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah okay. He's just quoting him. All right. First thing, uh, I'm referencing Psalm 149. I want to cover a lot in the next few minutes. Psalm 149 is, yeah, let's go there. Let's go to, let me know when you get there. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. And so the first, this, this Psalm 149 is that second bullet, and it's all about. I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking while you're turning. I want to talk while you're turning pages. It's all about don't put your faith in people. Man. The first, the next topic, the next um, tip for growing your faith is don't put your faith in people. Anybody tell me why? Why is that important uh, to help you grow your faith, not putting your faith in people? I always say that as a joke. Uh, 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 Rob? Go ahead. I always say as a joke, God is good. God is always good, but people still suck sometimes. <laughs> God is always good. People suck sometimes. People fail. People fail. People, you guarantee. People are guaranteed to fail. They end up breaking our hearts, and then we get all like... They break so your heart. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Any, any other reasons why we should not... Um, so what happens sometimes, what happens sometimes, this whole topic of uh, don't, put, don't put your faith in people is, what happens, uh, it's probably human nature, that, you know, sometimes we elevate people. Sometimes we put people on pedestals. Sometimes we put people up, up, up. And we're so enamored by certain people. And then when they do one little thing that's not, doesn't fit into your category of expectation. They crumble, right? Bam. You're, you're can they're canceled off your hero list. What, 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 what was that, Yesenia? Uh, you got heroes or zeros? Oh, heroes or zeros. Heroes or zeros. I guess I'm sometimes a zero in people's lives. Amen. <laughs> right? So let's go ahead and look at 149. Praise. Uh, you might want to read. Help me read. Okay, go ahead. Nice and, just read nice and loud. Hallelujah. Sing to Yahweh in your song. Sing his praise in the assembly of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the people of Zion glory in their king. Okay, pause. So right now, the focus is on God, right? By the way, I don't know if you guys saw it, but what they call me? What they call me for it, Ralph? They called me a her heretical, a heretic, a heretic. <laughs> they called me a heretic. I don't want to remind you, I just want to say, because, you know, I remember when I was getting my master's, I took a class in um, St. Augustine. And St. Augustine, he was very strict about if anything, right, anything is not lifting up, right, if not focusing on God, including clapping, including dancing, including uh, moving, <laughs> Don't do it, right? That's why I think that's where we get the whole idea of don't clap in church and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But 
we said that we sang this one song at the end of Mass. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon, like William sang last Thursday, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will sing like, I will dance like David danced, right? And by the way, uh, David's wife, right? Was it David's wife? David's wife called David heretical. She was like, what's wrong with you? Your clothes are coming off. Your, your clothes are coming off. You're dancing so much. <laughs> and didn't David's wife get punished for, get, yes. for, for acting like David was wrong? So whatever we do, all I'm saying is, whatever we do, it should be lifting up and edifying and focusing on God. I remember one time I did kind of got... You know, the word got out that Deacon Doug is dancing at the masses, you know. I, I, got, I got that title because at the big Anaheim Convention Center, you know, we have that big old mass, might be 10,000 people. Well, Sister Edith Pentegrass was in charge. She said, Deacon, I want you to dance on the, with the book. I said, okay, you said it, right? <laughs> I think I was there, Deacon. Yeah, <laughs> and I was dancing, 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 right? And then I went to a deacon's retreat, and they said, we heard about that dancing deacon, man. He, he's not supposed to dance. Be crazy. And I said, well, guys, uh, can I join you? Because I'm, I'm actually the one. I'm that guy. And they were saying, well, the bishop was saying we shouldn't be bringing attention to ourselves. And Psalm 49 is really all about bringing all the attention to God because of what God means to the author here, or I think it's King David, to the author. Because of what you mean to me. I think we left off in verse 4. Is that right, Roth? Verse 3. Verse three. Continue, keep, keep reading. Let them dance and praise his name. See? Let them dance and praise his name. And make music for him with harp and timbrel. For Yahweh delights in his people. He crowns the lowly with victory. The saints will exult in triumph, even at night, on their couches. Let the praise of God be on their lips, and in their hands two-edged swords. To wreak vengeance on the nations, and punishment on the peoples. Let me tell you what that means. That means that when somebody comes up against you as your enemy, praise the Lord! And your praises, your praises, the Lord is putting, putting, the, putting the spiritual warfare in God's hands. And he will take care of them. Let God take care of it for you. Amen. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Okay. So we're looking at James chapter 1. James is in the very, almost in the very, very back of the Bible. And we're talking about growing our faith with endurance, enduring trials. That's how, that's how we grow our faith, by enduring trials. Again, that sounds a little crazy that we're saying. <laughs> uh, it took me a while to, to understand this. I mean, really understand what he's really, I mean, what is he really saying here? Especially that first uh, chapter, um, verse 2. You guys found it, chapter 1, verse 2? In my translation, it sounds kind of crazy. You guys find it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can somebody read it nice and low? You said verse 2? Yeah, yeah. It says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. Good, yeah, good. Keep, keep going. In many kinds. In your, yeah, that's, that's, that's it, right? Verse 2. Did you hear what he just said? He says, and there's another translation that says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. <laughs> Want to keep going, Rob? Uh, uh, um, yeah. Lord. 
For you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Perseverance, right. Perseverance, right. Perseverance. And let perseverance be perfect, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Yeah, yeah. And my, um, my translation says, you may be mature and complete. Another word, another word for uh, perfect is mature. Okay, mature. So that's what we want. That's what we want. My goal for Sora LA when it comes to growing your faith is mature leaders, mature Christians. Okay? Uh, we're going to verse 8. Let's go on to verse 8. Okay. Yeah. Question? Question? No, I'm just saying that my sister, you got another translation? Go ahead. Steadfast. Steadfast. Mm -hmm. what, and, and did, I, I like that word steadfast. Mm -hmm. Do you like that word steadfast? I, I still don't quite understand the Anybody want to help him out with that? Or I, I can. Steadfast. Can you go read the whole thing? Uh, okay. uh, 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 Jason, Jason, can you read the whole thing? The yeah, from considerate pure joy. Read Consider that. Start. All joy, my brethren, when you meet various trials, where you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Okay, uh, uh, produces steadfast what? Steadfast fastness. Steadfast fastness. Really? Yes. Yeah, wow. That's interesting. Mine says, mine says develops perseverance. Per, and then continue. Fastness what? And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, steadfastness, steadfastness, steadfast means firmly fixed in place. Did you look it up? Mm -hmm. Firmly fixed. Don't quit, right? Mm -hmm. Stay firm. St steadfast. Don't, don't slip. Um, anybody, uh, I know when I was in high school, I was on the um, long distance track team. I, was, I, I ran long distance. You know, endurance. I was, so the, the key for us was endurance. Not, not sprinting. Although the sprinters were the famous ones, right? The sprinters were the popular ones. But we were the ones that had to stick to the end. Um, that help you out, Jason? No, I'd say did that. You got clarity on that? Yeah. We're talking about growing, right? We're talking about growing, and really, what we're getting at here, James, he's trying to get us to grow up, grow up. Ouch. <laughs> right. Right. Some people go to Mass every Sunday, like I said, go to Mass every Sunday, come to Sower Nights on Thursdays, and don't grow up. All right? Okay. Yes. I think God is molding each one individually. You cannot just say that they're not growing at all. Because in the eyes of God, they're growing. He's working on them. Right. I sound maybe the imperfections, maybe not in the way you want to see them, but he's making sure everybody grows. So you're saying I'm kind of judgy, aren't you? That's what you're saying. I'm judging, right? I mean, Right. Think, right. So you say, are you saying I'm being kind of judgy, right? No, I didn't say judging. I just say, well, that's just your opinion. Well, let me. This is what I'm gonna say, I guys. Think you are judging. Well, I'm gonna. Right, what, so what, what I'm saying. What I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Right now. Right now. I'm being judgy. And I know some people. Some people might not like that. Okay. You might. Some people might not like me coming off judgy. Right? But what I'm saying is, and I think that's what James is saying here. As a matter of fact, my, one of the things I like about St. James is he's definitely judgy. Tell like he tells it like it is. He says, you know what? You're going to grow or you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there should be evidence of your growth. Amen. There should be evidence of your growth. Yeah. God Only God would know, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have the same call. Yeah, you in never the know. Same room and we have, there's so many calls. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the, 
I think the general point you're trying to make is that we can't say that some people are dying and some people are correct, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll, I live with your siblings. I'll just, like my sisters and my brothers were not alike the same thing. I'll just right. say this. Yeah. But right. I think that's what the, the, the word of God is saying. He's saying in your individuality, in your uniqueness, you have to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who you are made and how you are made. Right, right. You have to grow. And it's your, it's your I'm, not, I'm not telling you if you're dying or not. <laughs> All I'm saying is we need to take a look at ourselves, right? Uh, there's another passage I think we're hopeful we get to in James where it's saying, it's saying the Word of God, the Word of God is like a mirror. And we should take that and look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. No, I'll, I'll just say this, you know, I'm going to throw myself under the bus real quick. Um, <laughs> definitely, I'll say that this, being in this ministry, there was a time where it grew a lot, where it grew to know the Lord more and I grew in this community and everything and at some point I got lost in the sauce, if you will. Mm -hmm. As some musicians do, as some uh, people who pray and stuff like that. We just tend to, I tend to, I got a little cocky, got a little like off scene. Like, no, I didn't, I tried not to show it, but I definitely got a little like, oh, the Lord uses me a lot. When I sing, when I get up there, the Holy Spirit moves. They see what I'm doing, that I'm saying, when I sing, when I'm on a microphone, when the Lord tells me, right. He moves. And once that thought pattern came in, once I let that come into my mind and I forgot where the source of that came from, I began to decline. Mm -hmm. A lot of depression, a lot of anxiety started coming back in. A lot of self-esteem issues started to come back in because I noticed the more I thought about myself as a source of that, the more, the less that the Holy Spirit moved. And right. I began to think, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> right. What's wrong with me? Yeah, Does yeah. God just not love me anymore? Yeah. I began to die. Right, that's and good, man. I'm trying to get back up from that, you know? Yeah, that's good yeah. stuff. That's really good. So I get what you're saying, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of us get really cut up. We can grow, 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 mm -hmm. grow so much. But if we forget to focus on what made us grow in the first place, mm -hmm. we begin right. to die. Right. Um, it reminds me of something else that, that I have to tell myself. And we should also, if anybody else is in here, like, in a position of leadership, uh, growing, growing in the Word of God is separate from preparing. If you're, if you're going to like present something or help lead something, that's not your, your process of growth. In other words, I have to pre I prepare these scriptures for you. That wasn't my prayer time. That was my prep time. So prep time is not my prayer time and meditation time and going deep in the Word of God. So uh, here's an example. So when I do that, when I go deep in prayer and meditation, contemplation in the Word of God, in addition to preparation, it's, it's like the Word of God. Just, and when I present it, the Word of God just flows. It just flows through me because it's been so planted in me like that. Okay, anybody more, any more comments or tomatoes you want to throw? Okay, let's read. Let's go on to verse, uh, let's go on to verse 8. Did we go all the way to verse 8, Hernan? No. Let's continue to verse 8. Since he is a man of two minds, unstable in all his ways. Wait, 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 yeah, what verse is that? That's really powerful. Oh, that, oh wait, did we, did that, did we skip, we're on verse 5? If any, yeah, let's go on. Start going. But if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and he will be given it. But he should ask in faith, not doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed about by the wind. Okay, pause. You guys get that? Yeah. When you ask, believe. Right? You must believe. What does believe mean? Believe means I believe that if I sit on this chair, it's going to hold me up. Right? I'm not going to go like this. Oh, I hope so. I hope it holds me up. Believe. <laughs> believe. You must believe. And believe with our hearts. And if you don't, this is so relevant. This is super duper relevant right now.
Because those who are not maturing in their faith, if they're not growing in their faith, if not, they're not growing in the Word of God, what ha this is what happens. Man, just try some yoga, man. And you're feeling a headache. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. No, it makes sense, doesn't it? You, you need to stretch your body out so you won't have any pain. Try a little bit of yoga. As a matter of fact, hey, matter of fact, matter of fact Brother Chris, if yoga doesn't work for you, man, I got some meditation for you. Just a little humming and not something that'll, you know, the, the thing that, uh, you know, all these different meditations you can do. You can do, try that. And then if the meditation doesn't work, you can try um, crystals. Hey, crystals are a good idea, aren't they? You know? And then, and then if you're not rooted, right, if you're not, don't believe for sure, you're getting pushed here, right? Getting pushed there, getting pushed here, wondering, is my, is, is, is my Catholic faith really worth it? I, I know, I've heard lots of young adults say that. Is it really worth it? Is it really giving the power I need? But you have to believe, right? Uh, can, can, let's go on, Mr. Uh, Hernan. Okay, for that person was not supposed that he will receive anything from the Lord, since he is a man of two minds, unstable in all his ways. If he is, honest, if he is double minded, right? Double minded, unstable in all of his ways, he said, You're not even going to receive anything. That's what I mean. James is like in our face. He's like kind of judging us. He's telling us, If you don't, if you don't really believe, if you're not formed, if you're not. If you're not mature, don't even expect to receive. He, I didn't say it. St. James said it. Right? St. James said it. Okay. Now let's skip over to verse uh, 22. That's the uh, same chapter, right? Same chapter, verse 22. Mine says deceiving yourselves. Deceiving yourselves. Be. Do not merely listen to the word. Deceiving yourselves. Okay? You guys, you guys understand that so far? Be doers of the word. Deceiving yourselves. Not just listening. Uh, somebody was asking me, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. Go continue, uh, uh, Hernan. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his own face in a mirror. He sees himself and goes off and promptly forgets what he looks like. But the one who peers into the perfect law of freedom and And it is not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts such a one shall be blessed in what he does. Be a doer of the word. That's that mirror. He's saying he's looking at the perfect law and it becomes a mirror. Right? Anyone who listens to the word but does not do says like a man who looks at the at his face in a mirror and after looking at it himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. You come to a sober night, you come to mass and you go, ah, oh, that was good. That was a good mass. That was good. And then you go, well, what did they say? What was it about? What was the message? Uh, let's continue to verse 27. Keep going. Religion, you... religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Okay, perfect. 
Verse 26 says, um, If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Ouch. Ouch. Thank you. So we're trying to grow. <laughs> I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you tonight. St. James is coming strong. He's coming strong. Okay? So uh, right now it's 920. It's 920, and I have lots more scriptures here for you. <laughs> it's 920. So I'm going to kind of review, summarize these really quick for you. Uh, these verses, these passages in the next bullet is talking about receive the word daily. And the reason why we should receive the word daily is because we need to brainwash ourselves. Does that make sense? Our, our brains, our spirits, our souls have been corrupted. Uh, you guys understand what wicked means? The word wicked actually means twisted. Uh, when you see a wicker, a wicker uh, piece of furniture is when they take the, the, breath, the things and they twist it one way or another. So in other words, wicked means that you might have a little bit of truth and it's twisted into a lie. Like, for example, love is love. You can love anybody. You can just love anybody. Even at the age of nine. <laughs> love is love. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We need to wash our minds in the word, right? So we can understand the, the mature, the, what James is saying, the, 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 the what did you say? The righteous word, the, the, uh, the true word. Amen. Feed on God's word like it is real food. Ephesians talks about um, moving from milk to the meat of the word. What happens is when babies can't handle meat, right? They start first, they start off with milk from the mother, right? But if we continue, I know my daughter believes in this. I don't know. She was, she was feeding her, son, her daughter at four years old from her breast. Right? But there comes a time, there comes a time when you start to desire the meat, right? You start to desire some real filling, solid food that's going to keep you sustained and they're going to keep you healthy, right? And strong. So when we move and we, when we grow and mature in our faith, we need the meat of the word. And so a, a symbol for the milk of the word is um, just a, you know, just a, a, a scripture a day to keep the devil away. You know, little, little easy. Everybody knows John 3, 16. Right? God so loved the world that he... But the, the meat of the word is James. Where he's saying, time to grow up. Time to get serious. Time to get some real meat. Okay, next bullet. Real fast. Believe that there is more. Believe that there is more. Enlarge your territory. Stretch your faith. Believe that God has a plan and a destiny for you. If you like you said, if you're going to go into the gym, start working out and expect to get some results. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, like I said, this is this is growth. This is what growth. Uh, it's getting late, so I'm going to tell you what growth really means to me. Growth means coming hungry. Growth means getting. I mean, I mean, I remember one time somebody brought somebody off the streets to Bible study, right? Growth means getting out there and stretching your capacity to do what you never thought you would do for God. 
Growth means walking out or working out your faith daily. Growth means trusting God in every, every single area of your life. Growth means stepping out on faith now. I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to trust God with my life. I'm, going to trust, I'm not going to doubt. I'm going to believe that God will make a way for me. And I'm going to take these scriptures and I'm going to apply them to my life. That's growth. And by the way, here's another thing I would love to hear you say. I'd love to hear you say, I did it, Deacon. I tried it and I fell on my face. Right? I've done that. I've been there. Right? And that's like, that's like, um, you know, that's you're in the battle. Yeah, you're fighting. You're doing it. And then, uh, then I'm going to say, good, well, get back up again. Don't stay down. Get up. Keep on. Keep on. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're on a battle, right? We're on a journey. We don't need to stay on our assets. Uh, uh, I want to say one more quick thing. Right, we're going to stay on our feet. We're going to make it to heaven on our feet, not on our, on our buttocks. I just want to say one more thing about that second to the last bullet, then we're, we'll wrap up real quick. Um, the last, second to the last bullet is in John chapter 11. It's a story of when Jesus comes to uh, bring his probably his best friend, right? His best friend, best friend Lazarus, Lazarus. right? <laughs> and is, is that, now that's everything we've been talking about, right? Jesus hangs back and waits through that go th through trials and tribulations and scary. They're scared that he's dead. And why didn't you come when we called you? What was wrong with you, Jesus? What's wrong with you, God? Come on. That's what Martha was saying, right? Come on. And uh, here's the thing that we got to get before we go. Uh, the topic here on this bullet is don't block your miracles. If you really want to grow, don't block your miracles. In other words, let them flow. Let the miracles flow. Let the glory of God be evident in your life. Now here's how you do that. Believe before you see. Jesus said, Jesus said, did not tell you. He said, did not tell you that if you believe, Martha, Martha must have been like, what in the heck's wrong with you, Jesus? What's wrong with you, you know? Can't you see? Can't you see that he's dead? Can't you see he's been dead for three days? Can't you see that if you, if you go over there, it's going to stink? And Jesus is just, come on, Martha. Haven't I been with you for at least three years? Haven't I been teaching you these things? When are you going to grow up? Right? When are you going to start getting the meat of the word in you? Right? You've been with me every day, coming to Mass, going to sore nights, and you still don't believe. Right? Ouch. Jesus says, Ouch. didn't I tell you that if you believe, then you will see the glory of God. And the glory of God is the manifest presence of his supernatural miracle working power in your life. That's growth. Amen. That's what I want to see. Amen. That's what I want to see in Soar LA. I want to see people who undoubted. I want to see people walking in power. I want to see people with testimonies. Every time I see you, you're going to have a testimony about how, how I've been through the fire and it came through as pure gold. And I still believe. Yes. Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come out. And they had to release him. They had to untie his, his, uh, his cloths. Lazarus came out. And he was set free. I don't know what Martha said after that. <laughs> She probably became a believer, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, she really, 
But she really believed, but it's just like Thomas, right? It's just like Thomas. Thomas doubted, right? He didn't believe. Believe. James, that's what James is saying. James is saying to grow, to grow your faith. It's almost like just, you know, if you're just getting up. I want to invite everybody to get out there. Here's, here's one thing. If you want to discern your future, right? If you, want to, if you want to discern your calling or what God wants to do with your life, don't just sit here and think about it. Don't just pray about it. You know, get, get, be about it. Get out there. You know, even here's, here's what I want to say. Who want to say? 930. This is what I want to say. If you think, if you even think a little bit that maybe God is calling you to teach, teach. If you think a little bit, if God is calling you to sing, sing. If you think it's a little bit, maybe God might call me, be calling me to serve uh, in the homeless ministry. Do it. In other words, err on the side of faith. You know, that's like the ancient, I think it's a Chinese proverb that says, if you, you know, jump or leap and your wings will appear. Right? That's what the eagles do, right? The eagles kick their eaglets out. They literally kick them out of their nest. And as they're falling, as they're falling, they start to wonder, what's going on, what's going on? And as they wonder, what's going on, what's going on? As they start shaking, they start, start shaking their wings, right? They catch the current. They catch the current and they start to fly, right? Time's up, guys. Let's stand up and pray. So I was saying that uh, I want to serve as your coach. I want to serve as your trainer. I want to. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like my trainer, my physical trainer. Uh, I don't know if the change tapes back on, but maybe it'll go turn off. But I would say, I want to. Sometimes the trainer, he has his, uh, you know, he has his, his his foot in my butt. That's what we. I want to call us to that. Today.